it's commonly known that 80% or more of data within organizations today is unstructured data. Talking about PDFs, images, videos, emails, and data that doesn't come in your typical structured format of rows and columns. We're going to see how to leverage Snowflake's document AI capability to unlock access to this data sitting in PDFs, receipts, and and inventory uh, specifications you can query and analyze. This will be a hands-on tutorial. As always, links to this will be in the description below. If you wanna follow step-by-step, we'll highly encourage you to follow along. Now for the data set, we're gonna see how Doc AI can, uh, using a zero-shot model, take those PDFs, pull out the necessary information, load that into a table so we can query and analyze that. To give an idea of what this will look like, this sample data set, again, links to this will be in the tutorial if you're following along. It does have a, a sample data set of over a thousand uh, PDFs, documents we wanted to search and understand what are the invoices, how much are the invoice amounts, have those invoices been paid, who is this getting uh, paid to, how is it getting shipped. Uh, most organizations that have data like this before Gen AI would not be able to query this or hire somebody to do manual entry to open up each PDF, pull out the balance due amount or the ship to date or the address and rate uh, as well as shipping total. So just a whole wealth of information we wanted to pull into a Snowflake instance. Doc AI is a wonderful, amazing solution for this. And we're going to demonstrate how you can do that step by step. So follow along as always, starting by setting up a stage, create a new database, copy over the script, call this invoice DB. Now, Doc AI is uh, unique because you're going to need the right privileges for you to access Doc AI in your organization. Copy over the scripts uh, for privileges. If I go back over to the UI, go to AIML, it does tell me uh, switch to a role that has access to document AI. You really can't do much with this right now because we don't have the privileges. The scripts we're gonna run should give us the right privileges uh, for uh, accessing Doc AI. Now, with the privileges provided, next get access to that data. Fortunately, that is available in this public repo. We're creating a stage to uh, this uh, S3 bucket, copying that into an internal stage called invoices that will actually hold that in the Snowflake instance. You can skip this entire step and do it with the external stage, but for this demonstration, we're gonna bring this into a Snowflake internal stage. If you're not familiar with that, check the documentation for the differences between external stages, internal stages, when to use what. Assuming the files have been copied over, refresh to make sure the files are registered to that stage. Now, when creating your stage, make sure your encryption to do the Snowflake SSE server-side encryption, that's very important to have that option included in your create uh, statement refresh this we see an invoice stage and the data sets we need uh, now having pdfs on structured data sitting in a stage this could essentially be your data lake and you come in with doc ai to query that at scale let's see how to take advantage of that before querying it's important to train the model to do the querying it's very easy to do that let's go back over to our snow site uh, environment make sure that the role and the user you're using has access to uh, doc AI, which we should have done that as part of the setup. Now go down to the AI ML Studio, click on doc AI, switch from my account admin, and I'm going to use this role called doc AI because this role has the right privileges for that. Assuming you are using a role that has the privileges, your interface should look like this. We're ready to build a model. Click on build, give the name, in this case, call it doc AI. Choose your database, choose schema, give the description, click on create takes a few seconds. That was successful. This is what the interface now looks uh, for us. Now, just a quick uh, walkthrough of the layout. Here it tells you privileges you have, uh, the documents you might have uploaded, values you are trying to extract from the documents, the simple steps you have to do. Bring in your data, train the model, and then use the model for inference at scale. I'm gonna upload a couple of documents, browse to your local directory, and get those uh, documents uploaded. Typically, one, two, three, four, five documents, as many as you need to actually train the model would be sufficient to browse and get those uploaded. The sample data has all been uploaded. Next thing in this three-step process is define your values. This is where Doc AI uses the zero-shot model to know what fields to extract uh, from this. To do that, I'm going to uh, just follow what we did here before. If you're going through 
this script, you can simply follow this prompt. The prompt examples are here. In this case, I want to get bill to name. Who is this invoice uh, getting billed to? Copy that, click on values, and it's so simple. Here, you want to give us your question. Who is this bill to? and the field name. What we're trying to do here is just extract a bunch of fields from this and allowing the model to know where to get those fields from. Build to will be a new field or think about it as a new column. The question we're asking the prompt in natural language, what is a build to name? That's all. We're not pointing, we're not telling it where it is. It's simply looking at the document and being able to pull that information. And hopefully it gets this correct. Build to name is Eric Buckman. So it's able to, to, to pull that. Continue with this exercise for all the other fields to get the, that extracted from this document. All the prompts have been entered. Again, very straightforward with your question in natural language, the field you want it thought into, and Doc AI gives you a preview of the value. It's important to validate to make sure that in this preview, that it's actually picking up the correct value for you. Let's just eyeball this discount amount. It's giving us a 9.74 for this kind of amount. Let's validate that. This kind of amount, obviously, is that. It looks correct. And it's giving that with a 0.83 uh, confidence score. It's a very high confidence score. If you want a certain threshold, you can always increase that. Notes is telling us, thank you for your business. The confidence score for this is a little bit smaller. If you take a look at the notes, I'm not sure why that confidence score is low, but the value is correct. We can deal with that. Now, if you don't like it, you can obviously go in and clear answer and try to uh, change your prompt to dial into the correct question. But this is an exercise you do once with the sample document. Once this exercise is done and all your values are correct, things are looking good, you can always accept all and review all the answers. This is essentially the fine tuning process in natural language. Once that's done and all your answers have been accepted and reviewed, everything is good. You can switch documents. There are six documents. I'm doing document number three. This is document number four. Uh, again, the more data you use for training, the more intelligent your model would be. I'm just going to go ahead and accept it for all six documents. You don't have to use six. You can do it on one document if you really wanted to. I think that's totally fine for the exercise. All right. So all the documents have been accepted and we validated that it's pulling the correct fields. This is uh, the second step of the process. To validate that, you can see the values. Now we're extracting those values to give us in uh, our columns, which will now become a table in Snowflake. So we have a, a table with ship to date, all the ID and all of this extracted from the documents we have stored in, in Snowflake. Now, once you're happy with the model, go back and we have the model here called Doc AI. This is what we're working with. I have a previously published model. Go back to the one we're working with here called Doc AI. So we've uh, loaded the data set with six uh, documents. We've extracted 16 fields out of that. Now, once you're ready with this model, next step is simply publishing that model for use for inference. In this case, we're simply going to publish this. If you want to go back and fine tune the model and dial in on your answers, you can click on train model again. Let's publish this model and make this available. Folks that are writing SQL can use this model for inference. Next, with the model created, we are now ready to begin and testing our prediction. Very simple. Going to invoice DB, public. Doc AI is model being referenced. In this case, Doc AI, make sure the name is the same. What we want is look at the directory full of PDFs and predict that this should return us a payload for each of those fields in that document extracted for us. Execute. At this point, we are now doing predictions and we should see the results show up here on the screen here shortly. That was a success looking at just two files because that's what we've limited. Now we can see it actually pulls the different values, balance amount coming as a JSON, build to coming in as a JSON. All of this unstructured data that was in the PDF is now coming to us as a JSON payload. And guess what? If you are working with Snowflake, we are pretty familiar on how to leverage JSON being able to pass that using the Snowflake JSON dot notation. Jump in, take the next couple of queries here. Essentially what this does for us would be to take this JSON payload and flatten that out. I can either uh, create a table, we can actually create a new table here called invoices field, which looks at everything from a stage and dumps that into uh, an invoices table. And then we can go into that invoices table and flatten that out. The very first step is to create the invoices table, make sure we're using the right model. 
AI stage is correct. Create data invoice table. The invoice table is getting created. One thing to call out is that over time, you might have different versions of your model. In that case, you're gonna wanna also specify the version number. For us today, we're doing one version, but assuming you're changing and you're pulling new fields over time, change the version number, make that version two, version three, depending on your specific situation. But again, keeping it very simple, we want version and this should create us an invoices uh, fields table. That was successful. Double check, do a refresh. We have a table called uh, invoices fields. Exploration of that. This is the name of the document, the size of the document. To the far right, we have the file URL and the payload uh, associated with that. This looks at the entire data lake, giving up the predictions based on the model which trends. It's super easy to go from using example documents, training your model, publishing the model, and being able to use that model for predictions and storing the results in a table. Once you have things in a table, I think we're very, very good at, at working with uh, structured data in a table. I'm looking at the invoices field that has the semi-structured data in JSON format. We will flatten that out using the dot notation by creating a new table called invoices. Expand the script, execute that. We have our final result of table called invoices. This is what you can report against. This is what you can write SQL statements against used in the Power BI report. The journey of going from unstructured data to structured data in a few steps with Doc AI has been very powerful. To reiterate, we started off with documents sitting in a repository like this. We brought them over into a Snowflake stage. We followed the three-step process using sample data load in six documents, extracted 16 fields out of that, uh, published a model, version one of the models. You can obviously have different versions of it. We went into SnowSight. We leveraged the model that was uh, published to do uh, predictions. Once the prediction happened, we had JSON data, and we took that JSON data, stored it in, into a table. Last but not least, by using dot notation to pass up the JSON data into actual uh, fields, or the ID, build to amount, item name, all of this, you can filter for very high uh, subtotal to see your high value customers. And what I like about this is it has a link. You can always go back and see what the original file is if you wanted to see where this data came from. In a nutshell, this is Doc AI in action, a powerful way to leverage Gen AI uh, and apply that to mountains of unstructured data, extract value, bring that into a structured format that you can then use for analysis, for reporting. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. As always, links to this will be in the description below. Check it out. The sample data is provided, the scripts are provided, and you should be able to follow. Apply this to so many use cases, invoices, receipts, contracts. Hopefully this was helpful to you. This has been through here with Demo Hub. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end. I'll see you in the next demo.